Hi everybody, uh, my name is Rod McLeod and uh, I am um, a snake breeder and if you're a snake breeder like me or if you just have one or two pet snakes and you've ever had one escape, you know they can be very difficult to find. And I don't worry about it too much because for one I have a room that's pretty snake proof uh, so they can't really get out of the room too well. Um, but I also have these snake traps that I make that I place along the wall and um, very effective for catching the snakes. So I'll uh, first show a, a shot of uh, a snake actually going into the trap and how it, how it works. And then if you are still interested, I will show you the details of how to make these. Okay, here's the trap set up, basically how I would do it against the wall. This is not a wall, I just put a board up, which you can do as well, um, if need be. But usually, as you know, when snakes, uh, you let them loose on the floor, they usually uh, go to the nearest wall and then follow the wall along and, uh, you know, look for cracks and such to, to go into. And, um, here I have a, oh, it's a sub-adult uh, fair eye king snake. Now the opening is only about three quarters of an inch, um, but that will allow a pretty good sized snake. So I'm just going to uh, put the snake down as if it was going along the wall. and. We'll just watch it and see if it naturally uh, just goes into the trap. watching the video then you might be interested in making one of these snake traps. Um, these are the basic components you need here. Aluminum window screen you can get at the hardware store. This happens to be a 36 inch uh, wide window screen. Okay, The other thing you'll need, uh, you need some scissors or a utility knife to cut the screen the size. Uh, you probably need a marker to uh, mark where you're going to cut the screen. You need a straight edge of some kind that, um, like this, that you can use, um, you can lay it on the utility 
utility screen to use it uh, to guide your knife if you score the screen. Of course, if you use scissors, you don't need it for that, but you will need it later for when you bend the screen to shape. Um, so you need a nice a straight edge that um, usually as long as the trap that you're going to make is best. Uh, you'll need a stapler. That's basically what you put the trap together with, is just regular staples. And you'll need uh, some paper clips. And uh, a binder clip is good. I like to use the binder clip. Leave one binder clip and a few paper clips to secure that one end that it will open. Um, and you'll probably need, you'll need a tape measure to uh, measure the pieces that you need to cut. Okay, you get out your screen, and for this particular trap, this small one, uh, it's going to be 24 inches long. So I'm going to measure 24 inches for the length. And this one, I want to end up with a cylinder about 5 inches in diameter. So I'm going to measure 18 inches wide. Tape here. 18 inches wide. Now it's actually a little longer than you need to make a 5 inch diameter, but um, you want to have a couple inches of overlap so you can fold the screen over and um, staple it, fold it over. That way it makes a snake proof seal. 18 inches again. That's my 18 inch mark. Take the straight edge. Draw your 18 and draw my line at this end. My 24. So you could adapt these to, uh, to any size. Now I'll take my scissors. Drop. Cut along that line. You can use regular old household scissors. The screen is not very really hard to cut. And this part. piece of screen that I cut, 24 inches by 18, and I'm going to end up making a cylinder, just like this. As you can see, the top, or where the, where the joins, uh, there's some overlap there. I make a snake-proof seal. So what I do is I fold it over, but don't fold this rounded part, you want to keep a nice round cylinder. Just cut the end to, to meet, you know, the, all the corners. Okay. And then I just take a regular stapler, put it in there, and start putting staples. And make sure you keep the edges. Staples are cheap. Yeah. Put a lot of them.
stick or something. But lay it down there on the overlap. You want about an inch, three quarters or an inch. And just use that as a guide to help you bend that, bend that over like that. Try to keep it kind of even so the cylinders, the cylinder stays pretty uniform. Again, I have the the open ends of the staples pointing down into the crook of the bend. That way it'll, it'll be tucked out of the way. So once that's uh, fairly bent over, you can finish it a little bit like this. Flatten it down. Pretty flat, and again, you want to keep this nice and rounded. Okay, so that's one fold. Now you still got not got a good cylinder. So how you get a cylinder? You're gonna fold it one more time. Just right where it wants to fold, right where the other fold ended. Time over. Again, you can use the board. So with all these folds, you can see if there's no way a snake is going to be able to get out of there. By the way, these work for more than snakes. Uh, I've caught many lizards small rodents in these, lots of bugs, beetles, much of anything that crawls. Uh, the rodents, mice, can chew their way out overnight to catch a mouse. So I wouldn't recommend it for trying to catch rodents because they'll chew holes in your traps. So it's another fold. So now I got almost a cylinder, still kind of teardrop shape. So now I go inside it and actually I should have a different straight edge that's in that board to fit inside this and get that rounded cylinder. Okay? That's pretty good. You can down flat edge. Once I've done that, to make sure it kind of stays that way, I take the stapler and staple back into that fold like this as far as the stapler will go. That's pretty good. So now you got the end stapled up uh, a few inches, which will be enough to hold it. It would be nice to get more up here, but I'll put one on the other end. Now to make the funnels for the ends of the trap, I cut uh, for this particular size trap the 12 inch by 12 inch square of, um, of the window screen. I already marked that piece, 12 by 12. So I cut that. That size happens to work out good for this 36 inch screen that I. I'm making a 24 inch long trap. So there's my piece. I'm going to make two of these. I already made one. So what I do is I fold it over corner to corner. So basically I fold the corner over. That's the finished edge. So I want to want to staple this, this corner. Make sure you get a nice Join pretty evenly. Take that stapler again and like the uh, cylinder, start 
staple down that edge.
have this all different size opening on each end if you wanted. Um, it's okay too. Might be a little bigger than I want, but actually it's fine. And you want to just get that, make that opening kind of round. Stick a sharpie in there maybe. Uh, some other papered type of object. Here's a fatter sharpie. Um, round it off. Make sure that going in is nice. So there's the cone. I get my trap cylinder. I already put the uh, cone on the other end. And what I want to end up with, you can see, you want to get that center of the cone, or that, that small end of the cone, basically into the center of the uh, cylinder. You don't want it too close to the edges. Because if it's too far to the edge, it's a lot easier for the snake to find that opening. So, you see the cone goes in, and there's quite a bit left over. The bigger you made your uh, your square of screen, the more overlap you're going to have. You only need about enough so we fold it over, you have about an inch on the small end. So I'm going to place the cone in there so that the small end is about in the middle. It's easier to do this if it's standing up on end. Then I'm going to take my marker and just mark wherever the cone meets the edge of the cylinder. Go all the way around, making sure it's in the middle. There's some adjustments you can do later, but I want to start with it as close to the center as you can. All the way around. So then you have a mark going around the cylinder, around the cone, where it meets that cylinder. Then all you got to do is fold, start with that fat, that, that long end, and gently fold the end back over and put a crease where you have that line drawn. Just crease it, not real, real hard, just so it stays. That's where it meets the cylinder, so when you slip it back on, it's going to fit right in there. Hopefully. We have something like this. Then you take your cylinder, slip that cone on, and see it fits pretty nice. And the small end of the cone is right in the middle of the cylinder. Good. I just go around and crease it a little more. Now this is in this cone here, this end. One end you have to keep, at least one end you have to keep some opening to get the snake back out. You could just uh, paper clip both ends on there if you want, but you only need one spot to get the snake out. So paper clips, you know, uh, they're the weak point. I have had snakes, large, large king snakes, and you know stronger snakes, uh, actually flex in there and actually were able to push that cone off when I just had paper clips. That's why I started adding binder clips to it, and then to make it even better, I started stapling all but maybe about a third of the one cone, and so most of it was uh, stapled well was less likely to have escapes. So there we go. Like that. Now I just, um, I'm going to try something new on this trap. Usually I trim this uh, extra piece off here, but I'm thinking I mean I can use that to, when I put it against the wall, use that in a way to block that small gap between where the wall is and the, the cylinder is. So I did that on this end, I left it and I kind of bent it. So you want to make sure those two are aligned so they both will be end up in the same spot along the wall. So now that your cone's fitted in place, 
you're going to staple it. But as I said, you want to leave um, some of it unstapled, so that's where you're going to get the snake out. So, since I'm going to leave this end here, I probably want to staple on that end first. Because if you use that as the end, I staple. Make sure it's in the middle. adjust where that cone the cone is by putting staples further in you can pull the center of the cone one way or the other towards uh, the direction you need you didn't get it aligned very well in the first place of course it doesn't have to be exactly in the center it needs to be away from the edges as much as possible in the center is the best place um, so there it is. So now I just all I need to do here's my opening to let get the snake out or a lizard or whatever you might have lost and captured again. You want to kind of be gentle because this is metal aluminum window screen. And, uh, you don't want to step on this or something because it's, you can never get get it back the same as it was. It'll still work, but. Um, so to close off that remaining portion, I just use some paper clips for most of these small snakes, you know, not strong enough paper clips. Um, but I found to add at least one binder clip really, really helps prevent the stronger snakes from busting out. Because they will get in there and start flexing and end up pushing that cone open. Yeah, as, as you're opening. So I would add um, a binder clip. A few paper clips, you know, and a binder clip find a clip and put it right in about in the middle of your opening and then I pull them down like that so you have your opening like this. I mean I'm going to fold this back. I was just trying it out, this extra piece that way and then back here and when I put it against the wall, the wall use that, I think, to help have the form it a little bit. Usually I push this in. I use that tape, like I said, to try to form a, a seal. Sometimes you can put something in there. You want to hold it pretty tight to the wall. You don't want a snake to come along and go underneath it or back on the edge. So this might help to work on that. might be a better way to do it. I mean, you could tack it to the wall. You know, you got to pick them up and remove them to get the snake out. So, I mean, you don't want to make it too permanent. Okay. Uh, well, that's basically it. And um, there's several sizes you can make. 
Uh, this is what I call a small. You could actually make smaller ones, but you want to have some distance between the two cones. Uh, if you make it too small, it's hard to get uh, the right form. Again, for this one, I used a 24-inch uh, long by 18-inch wide piece of screen uh, for the cylinder. I'm going to leave those one-inch overlaps. Uh, for the funnel ends, I used 12 by 12-inch squares to make those funnels and then basic uh, staples put it together and um, paper clips paper clips and the binder clip. And there are some larger sizes. Um, you can just scale it up. Um, I have measurements written down for them, but uh, maybe I'll post it on my website. Um, website is www.highlandherps.com and I think I'll, maybe I'll try to post some of this. Just post this video and maybe some of those dimensions. Uh, I thought about trying to use this uh, this plastic window screen. This is a heavy duty screen. I think it might be just too uh, flimsy to make something. Yeah, this is pretty rigid. Uh, but it would be nicer you wouldn't be poking yourself with it. Uh, so I don't know. If you do put these outside, remember to put some provide shade uh, and maybe some water and moisture for the animal. Because once they get caught, they're stuck in there, and if it's in the sun, you're going to cook them. So you got to be real careful about putting them outside. But they do work well along the edges of your house. If you give a snake escape and it gets out, it'll probably run along the walls of your house on the outside, and uh, these traps will catch them. And but remember to provide shade. And you can put bait, you know, if, if need be. If you're having a problem with uh, catching one, um, you can put something like a lizard. If it's a lizard-eating snake, a lizard will, will do well, last you know, a while in there. I mean, like a day or so, and then maybe swap them out. But, you know, a little mouse or something. A mouse will chew through, and a, a baby mouse will just quickly die. So, um, But I, if you put it along a wall or make some kind of wall or a board set up that would make them run along the edge, and you can direct them into these funnels. Okay, well, uh, hopefully uh, my video was clear enough for you to see how to make these uh, traps. And... Um, just if you look on my website. I'm, I haven't got it on there yet, but I will post a, post this video and I'll post uh, some of the written dimensions and make different sizes. My website is www.highlandherp.com. So uh, good luck. If you've got any questions, uh, email me. Um, email me at highlandherper. Islandherper at gmail.com. Alright, thanks for watching.